why do we believe what we believe? Why do we do the things we do? Why do we feel threatened when what we believe is challenged or if someone says something different than what we believe? What about you? Do you believe the things that you see? Do you believe the things that you hear? The stuff you see on TV, the stuff you see on the internet? There's this old saying, believe half of what you see and nothing that you hear. Hello, beautiful souls and skeptics. This is Dr. Danny, physician astrologer. Today, we are going to talk about skepticism, space crocs, and the equinox. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Uh, today, we're going to do a little bit of astrology through the week of the equinox. And uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about skepticism because I think it's uh, all kind of playing out in the energies. But first, I have to talk to you about space crux. <laughs> these are amazing. As you saw on my thumbnail, these are my new work shoes. I could not believe these. I wear Crocs at work because they're super comfortable. They're lightweight. I'm not getting paid to talk about these. They're just great shoes in general for healthcare workers. And if you're on your feet all day. But I wear a really small shoe, about a five and a half women's or a J2 for Crocs. <laughs> and I found these at the Croc store and they have space all over them. So I, I just love these because I'm into space. I love the universe. And this is these are my new work shoes. So I just wanted to share that with you all. These are amazing. Um, so let's get into uh, skepticism a little bit. There's this cycle of uh, programming and it usually starts with a piece of information, right? And it either resonates with what we believe or it doesn't. So we all know the sky's blue or we all believe the sky's blue because we see it. So we can believe half of what we see. So yes, I would agree that the sky is blue. So we have this information. Someone has said the sky is blue. We look up, we see the sky is blue. We say, okay. Cool. Then maybe some new information comes in. Maybe there's a like a million people out there saying, nah, the sky is purple or the sky is green. So then, then we observe. And what if in fact, now this is just hypothetical, of course, but what if in fact we started observing the sky because we wanted to see who are these believers of a purple sky? Who are these believers of a green sky? So we watch, we observe, we see what the sky looks like from day to day. We may notice some individual variations in the sky, like one day the sky might be gray, or one day indeed the sky might be green. So then we're going to look into it a little more. Why do people believe the sky is blue? Or why do they believe it's green? And we, we get a little bit of healthy skepticism and, and an inspiration to investigate, to compare if our beliefs are the same. And then, so now we have this new information, which changes our beliefs, and then we go through the cycle again, over and over and over. And each time we go through this cycle, you guys, our inner beliefs change, our subconscious changes. So I'd like to give you another example because when I was thinking about the equinox and how I wanted to talk to you guys about astrology, I've noted that, noted a, a strange variation in uh, sunset and sunrise times that don't really correspond to what everybody says is the first day of fall or the equinox. I'm, I'm a huge skeptic. I, I don't believe anything. Um, so let me share my screen and I'm going to just kind of walk with you, walk you through my uh, little process here on how I do things. So I said, okay, when exactly is the first day of fall? Because some, some calendars say that the equinox is on the 21st. Uh, Microsoft Bing and Google, they say it's Saturday, September 23rd. But what does equinox actually mean? It means that you have the equal amount of daylight and the equal amount of nighttime. So you should have in a 24 hour 0.25 day, you should have 12 hours and 0.125, et cetera, hours of daylight and the opposite of uh, nighttime, right? Okay, that makes sense. So then I said, all right, well, when exactly does this day? Let me look at the time and day. I was very interested in this. So I went through about five different cities, all at different latitudes to see exactly when the equinox was. So the first one I came upon, this is Illinois, USA. Okay. Now what we're looking for is 
sunrise and sunset to be around the same time, but 12 hours apart. So for example, on this day, sunrise is at 6.51 a.m., sunset is at 6.58 p.m. When do they actually equal each other? I would say it's probably right around here because here the day is two minutes longer and here the day is one minute shorter. So between the 25th and 26th in this area of the world is the actual equinox. It's a couple days later. Does that really matter? I don't know. I'm just seeing that it's different. The internet will tell you that the equinox is somewhere between the 21st and the 24th of September. And for me, when I look at the times and dates and the time sunset sunrises and sunsets, they're just a little bit off. Let's just test the theory. So now we're going to go to Cancun, Mexico, which is a little farther south. When exactly is their equinox? Once again, it, it looks a little bit later to me. So it's right here. It's on the 29th. Interesting, isn't it? That's uh, right around the, the next uh, full moon as well. So there you have it. Cancun, Mexico's equinox is on the 29th. What? Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? So we have this piece of information. We're told the first day of fall is the 21st or the 23rd or whatever it is. But then when we actually make observations, we see some minor variations. Let's just keep going. A couple more cities. We're going to go to London, a little bit farther north. When exactly is London's equinox? Let's see. So I would say it's probably around here. Once again, the 25th, 26th, right around the same um, latitude as Illinois. Got two more examples. So you can see they're all just a little bit different. Where are we here? This is going to be Cairo, Egypt. Yeah, so we're not just the United States focused. Let's go here again. Look, the 27th. Okay. These are just a few examples. Uh, this is going to be, uh, I didn't want to leave out the Southern Hemisphere. Here's Brisbane, uh, Brisbane, Australia. It's interesting because their equinox is going to be their uh, vernal equinox. They're about to enter into their spring season. So where is their equinox? It's earlier. What? Okay, so now I'm really confused because now we have the 19th and 18th and 19th for Brisbane's equinox. I don't know. I'm just saying it, it. This this is how we do it. Okay. So you have this information, you have belief from this information, but then you observe to see if it's true. You see variation, you do investigation with a little bit of skepticism, and then you have new information. Now, does this new information necessarily affect us? I mean, I'm not sure. I'm just into accurate information. So this is why I look at the sky. This is why on my birthday, when I realized that my son was not in Leo, it was in fact in cancer on August 4th, this is when my belief system changed about the type of astrology that I needed to do, okay? So anywho, that's, that's skepticism. I'm, I often wonder why we call it the fall. Um, at least here in the Northern Hemisphere, it's the fall because the sun is not as high in the sky. It's sinking, it's sinking, it's sinking, it's sinking. So it's falling. Also the falling leaves, right? So understand too why we use the words that we use. Is it based on belief? Is it based on true information? All very good questions. All right, guys, let's do a little bit of astrology. Um, what I'm going to do since uh, the equinox is not necessarily on the same day for everybody I'm going to go through this range. I'm just going to pick up the big energies as we go through it. So from the 21st of September through the 29th of September, this is the week we're looking at. Okay, right before the full moon. I'm not actually going to do a full moon video because I need to get the uh, Venus through the eclipses video out for you guys. And also uh, because there's really no aspects to the sun moon. So everything else is other energies are going to be playing out for us. And so I thought this might be a, like a, a nice substitute for the full moon video. Okay. Here's what we got a couple big things. So during this whole week, the sun is going to trine on Pluto. Okay. Now Pluto has been squaring our collective lunar nodes for this whole year and is in retrograde right now. And so Pluto will be turning direct on the 4th of October, I want to say, and then we'll be going through that, uh, squaring the nodes one more time, um, usually on the third, 
pass of these types of things. Uh, it's more of an integrative, constructive squaring type of energy. Whereas earlier this year, it was like a holy cow, what is going on? Everything is changing. So this this is going to be a better. This is going to be a more empowering uh, square on the lunar nodes. But the sun is trining on Pluto as well. So the sun's in Virgo right now. The sun went into Virgo on the 15th. And Virgo is the constellation where we think of manifesting matter from energy. It's the gestation. It's the birthing mother sky goddess. It's got the most galaxies uh, within its constellational border. So if you were to zoom in with a very powerful telescope, you would see about 2,000 galaxies. Um, sort of highlighting the Virgo cluster. No other constellation has that many by an order of magnitude of over a hundred. So that's the energy of Virgo. You've got your sun there, and then you've got Pluto going retrograde through Sagittarius, which is that higher truth and knowledge. Um, so this is enormous power of being able to manifest energy from matter. Uh, this is very nice energy. Lots of good energies for this week. Um, the sun is also opposing Neptune. Neptune's also retrograde in Pisces, undergoing the surrender to the depths of, uh, of subconscious. And so you have the sun in Virgo wanting to begin to integrate, manifest, but you have this balancing act between getting lost in illusion and balancing uh, that with what's real, what you can actually do. So be careful with that. Don't go too far into the depths. Don't be too crazy with all the things you have to do. Try to balance that while the sun is opposing Neptune. Now, Pluto and Neptune are also sextiling, and they're doing this for a long time because they're, they're slow movers uh, and they're way, way, way out there in space. But for all of us collectively, because it's coming from Sagittarius Pisces, we've got this energy for diving deep into the subconscious and really digging in there and finding out who we truly are, transforming our inappropriate programming that makes us believe what we believe for no reason, and then becoming, surrendering to the authentic self. Uranus and Pluto are also training, and this is a very long transit as well. Okay, so you've got all the big players <clears throat> in very nice aspects. You have that Uranus loosely conjunct Jupiter. You've got uh, Neptune sextiling Pluto. And then you've got Uranus training on Pluto. And this is a great energy for transformation and metamorphosis, but also for mutation. So be very careful about <clears throat> manifesting your darker desires. I mean, we all have them. So... You know, some of us hate ourselves for having dark desires and dark thoughts, <clears throat> and some people are indifferent to it and others love it. But usually manifesting those is not good for the collective or for yourself. So do be careful. It's okay to have them, but don't manifest them, especially with that sun there in Virgo. Next, we've got some nodal energy. We have Mars conjunct the south node, <clears throat> opposing uh, the North Node, uh, which is also conjunct our collective Chiron, which is our wounded healer teacher. So this this axis of Pisces Virgo is very, very important. So Mars, what does he do? He fights for his desires. Why does he do that? Because he has a belief. He has an inner belief and knowing, right? Um He's, he's next to the South Node, which is our repetitive actions, our, our karmic patterns, right? He's incredibly inspired to take action, right? So you got to ask yourself, what are you fighting for and what are you fighting about? Are you fighting against something or are you fighting for something? That's what Mars asks us to do, especially opposing this karmic axis, this evolutionary uh, path that our collective is taking. We all have to ask ourselves, are we fighting against war or are we fighting for peace, right? Are we fighting hunger or are we fighting for food? Like, what are we actually fighting for and where does it come from? And is the battle even truly real? That's another thing we have to ask ourselves. And then with Chiron over there in the North Node, 
<clears throat> this is our disconnection from spirit. That's the wound that our collective is going through right now. Who is our God? What is our cosmology? What do we believe? Where is our faith placed? So it's it's a collective destiny to accept past, to sim assimilate new knowledge, and then to surrender to universal love and oneness. Then Venus, my sweet Venus, she squares on Uranus and Jupiter. So Venus and Leo is direct and squaring off these two enormous planets in Aries, uh, describing a sudden growth that's good for free spirits, a revolution and evolution of the self. So watch for attitudes of fighting against something once again, because it's better to fight for something. And Venus and Leo likes to fight. So this can be a constructive square. And this is actually the third one. So they usually are. So even the squares in this energy this week are literally like the third one we've been going through. So a lot of integration, a lot of new knowledge coming in, a lot of rethinking the way we want to move forward in our lives. And when you, when you look at this um, final aspect here of Mercury trining on Uranus and Jupiter, this is, this is Mercury basically saying what I just said, you know, be the spokesperson, you know, Mercury and Leo is out there really talking about themselves for themselves, pushing, you know, themselves because they believe in themselves. So uh, that's what Mercury is, is uh, saying to these two giants over here in Aries. Okay. So that's all I've got. I think this was a short video this time, you guys. We're going to stop sharing just for a second. So I want y'all to just have a healthy sense of skepticism, right? I mean, you know, look around you, you know, believe half of what you see, investigate what you're looking for. I mean, it does it have any variation that, that, uh, you know, needs, needs some further diving into test your beliefs and make sure they're coming from your truest, authentic inner self. And then, um, don't just believe what you're told because the universe is way more interesting than what uh, the collective consciousness believes. But uh, don't take my word for it. Just look up, you guys. All right, let me show you how you can find me and then we will get out of here. So this is my website, drdanny.com, D-R-D-A-N.com. Uh, if you end up on the homepage, this is what you'll see. I have this wonderful package where you'll have a Venus centered reading to get you guys through the eclipse. You can also customize this package and get any one or more of these items for a lower price. It's fantastic. If you want to learn more about 13 sign astrology, you can come over here and get your sun sign dates. You can also get a sun moon rising interpretation that is accurate to the true sky. You can also calculate your own chart here that is also accurate to the sky. It is powered by Mastering the Zodiac. Uh, and then I'm also teaching, so you can come over to see my courses. Uh, this is a great introductory course if you are into astrology, but want to learn a little bit more about astronomy and vice versa. So you don't have to really have any prior knowledge to watch this video. There's a lot of good astrology in there, and it might just get you super excited. And this one, guys, is coming. I'm working on this right now. It's huge, and it's awesome. So you want to stay on this page if you can. Also, you can find me on uh, Facebook. You can like my page, uh, subscribe to my channel, you YouTube lurkers, and of course, like this video. Next week, I'm going to publish the Venus through the eclipse. And I think that's everything. So namaste, beautiful souls. Thank you for joining me today. And I hope you have a wonderful equinox. <laughs>